Thus, being bilingual make you a good translator. Coming up. Hello and welcome back to the Freelance Verse. Nice to have you back on the channel. Thanks so much for coming back. Before we get into it, make sure to subscribe. We are so close to 18,000 subscribers. I don't know, by the, the time this goes out, maybe we already reached it. Uh, thanks so much for the support. It's been growing so quickly, the channel, and I really appreciate every one of you being here, uh, especially the channel members, by the way. I think there are now 12 members on the channel who pay a monthly fee to be part of this community, which I appreciate a, a lot. Thank you very much. Today we tackle a topic that is uh, being talked about in the industry very often, and that is whether being bilingual makes you a good translator. I specifically add the qualifier good in there because as you know, translator is not a product, protected profession, so anyone, including you, including everyone in the world, can, can call themselves translator. So by that logic, yes, being bilingual would technically make you a translator, right? That's why I added the qualifier good in there. And as you can imagine, my answer would then be no, it doesn't. I'm approaching this video a bit differently than my usual videos. Usually I have a, a, a rough script here and I made, made my research, made my notes. Not this time, I want to try something new. I want to just speak from my heart. So I'm rather just gonna share my information, share what I've learned over the years, um, what I've observed in the industry, whether I've seen many bilinguals who actually do a very good job translating. So there's definitely an argument to be had there. So it's an interesting topic that I would like to just talk to you a little bit more about. Just before we get into it, a quick word from our sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes in design, business, tech, and many more, including translation. Anyone can join the millions of members in our community to learn cutting edge skills, network with peers, uh, and discover new opportunities. If you're interested in translation, just type in the keyword and you can find a bunch of super fun and interesting courses, such as this one from a friend of the show, Robert Gebhardt. Skillshare offers any freelance verse subscribers 40% off their annual subscription for the next two weeks only. So save money right now and start learning by clicking the link in the description and enter flash 40 at checkout. On with the video. So as I said, in my opinion, being bilingual does not necessarily make you a good translator. Mastering two languages or more languages if you want uh, is of course essential and the basic requirement to be a good translator, but it does it's not everything. Like it doesn't make you a translator just as knowing human autonomy doesn't make you a good doctor or a doctor at all, right? There is much more that comes with it. It's, it's a requirement, it's a skill that you need, it's a basic, but it's not everything. Many, many different areas come into play uh, in terms of additional skills needed. You need uh, great cultural skills, competencies, you need to be an excellent writer, you need to be an excellent researcher, uh, you need to have understanding of different audiences, different registers, different styles. Um, your spelling, your grammar needs to be on top, really, more better than most of the population on the world, right? And all these things is, is uh, skills that you acquire through, uh, uh, through education, to, to do uh, certification through experience as well, right? And if, if you have a bilingual in your company and you give them your work to be translated um, and they're not a translator, then this is just a side thought, right? They have their to-do list, they have their daily tasks, that their actual profession, and then they also do translation on the side. I, I hear that all the time, that they have someone in the, in, in the company that is bilingual, maybe grew up bilingually, and he just does, or he or she does just all the translations. While that may, may be fine for very standard text and to, to, to translate one text to the, to the other, it's definitely doable, right? You can definitely do that, but that's not what the localization process is. You might translate the document, but you don't localize it. And that's super important. And, and a company needs to realize how important localization is, especially when you want to sell, sell a service or sell a product localization is the key, right? People are way more likely to buy something that is well localized to their needs, to their location, to their standards. And I'm not speaking of the transfer of, of information from one text to another, I'm speaking of the process in between, right? That's actually the translation process that's happening. And exactly in there is where we can excel, right? We can be excellent writers, we can be excellent, we have an excellent command of the target audience, the target uh, language as well that we just trained over years and years and if you have that much experience then it's very likely that something um, 
comes up again, right? It's it happens all the time that in text something comes up that I've translated a hundred times, and I know now how to attack these problems. Especially with English as a source language, you always have these very large um, ellipses or you know sub clauses that come before the main clause, and then it's separated by a comma, and then it goes into the the main sentence. If you know what I mean. And you can't really do that in German, so you always need to rewrite it. And I'm now very used to these sentences, so I know how to attack these problems. But if you just keep this subclass ahead of the of the text with a, with an ellipsis and then a comma, and then you start the main clause in German, then it's just plain wrong. And uh, that's hard to these things are hard to know if you're not a trained linguist. And then of course, on top of that, we are specialized in specific fields. So uh, if you give a, a legal document to a layperson to translate it, they might translate the, the words word for word correctly, but I mean, there's so much legal content that you need to research. How is this law exactly called in Germany and Switzerland? How do you call this practice, this process, right? So it goes in, way more goes into it than people think. And uh, that's what we need to promote. When you're selling yourself as well, right? We are not just paid for the for the time that we work. We are paid for years of education, years of experience. Uh, so don't just charge for the time you spend. Don't just charge when you work one hour. Don't just charge one hour of work. You charge whatever the service costs you, whatever why you are the expert in it, right? Of course, you need to be able to back it up. If you can't back it up, then you can't charge for it. Additionally, I think uh, trained translators are experts in, in specific tools, in cut tools, which can increase productivity, which can increase consistency, uh, definitely, uh, considerably. Um, you can work with style guides. You are aware of, of uh, what people want to sell, where they want to sell something. So if you're doing marketing for for let's say for French for Canada and French for France, you know what the differences are, you know how to sell to people in these areas if you are specialized in this locale. So all these things and this, uh, a very good eye for detail, very special focus on being obsessed with language details. All these things are what make you a good translator and not actually being bilingual. And lastly, another point that comes up over and over again when people talk about this topic is um, that we are way more, way better equipped to deal with special traps that come with translation, right? For example, figure of speech, um, direct quotations, uh, lyrics of some sort, uh, titles, maybe reference to school education systems. All these things are common traps in translation that you have to attack in a way. Uh, yeah, you need to either know it or you need to talk to the client how they want to attack it, right? If you if you have an explanation of an, of an UK uh, school system, when you're translating this into German, then it becomes very complicated, right? First of all, all these names are proper names, they should stay in English. Second, does, do you even need that in the German text? Why, why would you explain the UK school system and not the German school system? Depends on the context, of course, right? But you need to know what the client wants, what is relevant. Uh, same goes with direct citations. You need to know uh, how, do you, how do you cite in German, how do you cite in English. Um, figures of speech, you just need to completely make up a new one. You can't just literally translate the figure of speech. Uh, and yeah, you see that all the time in texts. I'm sure you've seen it as well. I see it all the time in German translations that there are literal figure of speech translations. And then you know that this was not done by a trained translator, even though the translation is perfectly fine, word for word, everything correct. But as a whole, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't read as a fresh text, but it reads as a translation. And that's what you want to achieve as a translator. You want to produce a text that looks like it was written in your target language. Whenever it's obvious that something is translated, that leaves a bad taste in your mouth, right? You're kind of thinking, okay, so this was not written for me. So why do I, why am I reading this? So the, the key, if you're really good, is to produce a content that looks like someone wrote it in their own language, uh, which for me would be German. So whenever I finish the translation, I usually either print it or I just look at it from a distance and I really think, would I write this like this if I was the author of the text, right? Or does it still sound translated? If it has too many like weird uh, sentence structures, you can very much tell, especially from English and French, there are a lot of sentence structures that you need to just standardize in German because no one would write like this, right? German is not such a, a flowy and singy language like the French are, for example. There you would have sentences that go on and on, very descriptive. Um, 
this you need to know, you need to train it for years and years and years uh, over and over again and that you can't just do by simply being bilingual, not putting down any bilinguals out there. If you are bilingual, natively bilingual, you have the perfect uh, prerequisites to become a translator. Just know that it's not enough. You can't just go out there and say, hey, I've, I'm all, I already know everything there is about language transfer and, and localization. You don't. Just you have very good chances to get there. So if you want to just follow through, get your education, get your experience in and then good luck. Thanks for watching. I see you next Monday with the next one. Bye bye.